especially when you're worshiping the king of kings the things you do by you know allowing yourself to be distracted it's not a thing you do by looking around that means you are not witnessing the presence of the king around you if you really want to worship god is something you do in spirit it's something you do knowing it's like nobody's just there it's just the king it's something you do out of humility it's something you do knowing that without the king you are nobody therefore you prostrate your bow before him i'm not saying you're going to lie on the floor it's out of your heart that you worship the worship of moving around or the worship of looking side by side it, it, that means you're just worshiping the church until worship comes out of your heart you're not praising or you're worshiping him and you look into yourself and say that without god the next second is not guaranteed thank you father is there anyone in the house today that doesn't need help i want you to lift up your hand if you don't need help from god if you don't need help in your life from god can i see your hands up i will so much congratulate you there are help and there are helps when somebody come to god like david and say i lift up my eyes onto the mountain you know that he doesn't have connection it's not that he doesn't know how to go about it but he question and say from whence cometh my help the help from a man is something you have to think twice when the help that comes from above we're going to pray about three prayer points as the lord leads us but before we do this prayer i want you to rise up i want you to acknowledge uh, uh, just humble yourself in the presence of god empty yourself soak yourself just empty yourself i want you to come to him helpless i want you to come to him needful I want you to come to him surrendering. At any time we come to the presence of God is an opportunity. And what that we beg of us, brethren, never you leave the presence of God. No matter what so ever, try the best in your life. Whether there be frustration, whether there be disappointment, whether there be rejection, never you leave the presence of God. I'm not saying only coming to church. Of course, church is part of the presence of God because the Bible says we should not forsake to assemble ourselves together as the manner of those are. Even in your own private places, don't compromise, don't go to that sin because of situation of life. Thank you, Lord. We will sing this song, but before we sing, I want to announce us a prayer point we're going to pray. Please pray from your heart. Pray from your heart. Pray for your from your heart. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. If only in his presence. And he said, God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always having all sufficiency in, sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Let us see again 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. 
2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 7 Therefore as you are born in everything Listen he said You are born in everything even in faith And utterance And knowledge And in all diligence And in your love to us See that ye are born in this grace also Which is referring to the grace of giving But what am I trying to emphasize here This is the word of grace The Bible said that we are born in all grace Which means there are graces And you see why we are struggling Because some of us Sometimes you might have the grace To pray But you don't have the grace to wait patiently for the answer and that becomes a problem. You say all oh, grace. Grace is not just only one. Favor is a grace. Obedience is a grace. I am what I am by the grace of God. If you obey God, it's because you have the grace to obey in you. Grace to prosper. Grace of breakthrough. Grace of. of when you come to people, you just find favor. He said that all grace may abound. All. To tell you that I have grace. And some of us are lacking in one grace or the other. You're going to lift up your voice this month. I don't know the area you're struggling is because a particular grace. Are you not patient enough? Are you quick to anger? You don't have self control. Now what we have been taught today You need the grace Of God To be self control Wherever you are struggling You want to lift up your voice now Even as a family You can't pray as a family Ask God that all grace May abound in your life All grace All grace All grace Paul said you have all things But in this let this grace also be in you. You have faith. You have all trances. Knowledge. And he's saying, in this also. In this also. If you can't pray, ask God for grace to pray. Don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly. If you're struggling so much, you're praying and praying. Ask God grace of understanding. You don't understand this season. That you're Are you about to curse God? Hey. I want to hear this song because when I when I want to raise this song, I, I went in the spirit, but it was not. Not for in God. You want to dedicate your life today for your heart's in grace. You want to make another commitment. The not for in God. We take God place in your life. It doesn't matter what it looks like today. Jesus mighty name we are praying First Chronicles chapter 12 verse 32 First Chronicles chapter 12 verse 32 And of the children of Issachar which were men that had understanding of the times To know what Israel ought to do To know what you ought to do We are in the month of, the fifth month of the year Soon we'll be in the half half of the year. Some of us have not even understood what to do. Either by reason of situation of life or by no reason of I am still doing what I know best how to do. And God is saying it's not the time for that now. Some of us are stagnant because of routine. And God is saying it's not the time. He said this man, this children of Yesaka, they understand, they understand the times to know what Israel ought to do. 
the heads of them we are 200 and all the brethren but this group of people understand the time and season until you begin to understand the time you are in even as a family until you begin to understand the season you are in brother you will not know what to do you will not know no matter how you think you're doing things you will not because god is saying it's not the time for that are you told that what you're doing is good and right and that's why the bible saying all you're getting get understanding but the time and season is so powerful by the grace of god we're going to hear a little bit of that in someone why not ask the lord whatever that is happening in your life Whatever you are doing steadily and gradually, and you are still in it from January till now, and you thought that is the leading of the Lord. You want to ask God concerning me and my family, concerning me. No matter the situation, you are praying and fasting, nothing is happening because you are during the time and season. You want to know why not? Ask God, let me know. Give me understanding of the time and season that I am in. That I may apply wisdom. That I will know what to do. That I will know what to do. Some of us are afraid to launch deep because we don't know the time and season that we are in. Some of us are still doing the same routine because we don't know the time and season that we are in. Some of us are still praying in prayer and prayer. We are praying for 10 years because we don't know the time and season we are in and God is saying it's not the time. Ask God, Father, that I may know, oh God in heaven, help me to understand the time and season that I am in. Help me to know what to do, Father. And please help me now to understand the time and season that I'm in. I prayed and fasted. I've done all good things that I ought to do. Oh God in heaven. I lift up my eyes unto you, Lord. I've sown all kind of seeds. I did all kind of fasting. Lord, help me to understand the time and season that I am in. I will know what to do. I will pay the award.
In the mighty name of Jesus, every evil association, every evil pattern, open your mouth and begin to pray. Evil patterns, evil patterns, evil patterns. You are the man of war. You are the man of war. Jesus, you are the man of war. You are the man of war. Jesus, let it be the Oh, you are the man of war. Be destroyed. You are the man of war. Jesus. Jesus, mighty name we are praying. Our Father, we want to thank you for the privilege, the great opportunity to experience your love towards us again today. We thank you, Father, that we are standing on a solid rock, a solid ground. And all the brothers God is sinking sand. Our hope is in you. Our life is in your hands. Some may trust in their chariots. Some in their horses. But we will always remember the name of the Lord. Amen. And for that God, we want to thank you for what you have started doing in this gathering. And all the things you have done. And better is the end of everything that we are about to do now, O God. As we go speaking about your power and authority, let it be manifested in our midst again in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Honor your word. Holy Spirit lead us. For Jesus, mighty blessing that we are praying. And amen. Praise the Lord. Give God a big clap of just because of time um maybe by the grace of god i'm going to i'm going to do um a kind of um, introduction to this um sermon today as the lord leads us and i want to thank the holy spirit because 
Today, most of the things that we have been saying from the Sunday school, even to the time our brother Evangelist was ministering in worship and songs, is just about the, today's sermon. It's just about today's sermon. And you know, we are talking about victory here. Like I asked, is there anyone that is in the house that doesn't need help? Of course, the kind of helps we need varies. The situations of life that we are in now also varies. But you cannot find a man who has no need. Praise the Lord. And when we announce victory, when we announce victory service, it's because we have to remind ourselves, yes, though the victory has been gotten for us, by Jesus on the cross of Calvary. And that is why we are called more than conquerors. Because he conquered all for us. And now he has given us that power. And we can stand to say that we are more than the he who has conquered all things for us. Why are we are still here on earth? More than conquering everything that has conquered. But does that mean that we are not more, no more in a battle? Does that mean that we have to go to bed and just sleep because Jesus has done all the work and therefore we have nothing to do but to continue to say Jesus did this and Jesus did that? No. And that is why when we look at it, we say victory service. It's a reminder to us that we are still in a battle and whatever battle you're going through, you will receive the victory. But you ought to do some certain things. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you see, as I'm talking today, by the grace of God, I've been praying. You know, I want to assure us, I want to let us know there are some of us here today that are going to go home without seeing the things that they have been seeing in their life before in the name of Jesus. Amen. And there are some that we wait. And there are some that is going to happen suddenly before you leave. Praise the Lord. Can I hear a louder amen, amen to that? I'm not here to just impress us. I'm here to speak the word of God and I lie not. Amen. We're going to look at, as I said, I'm going to introduce this uh, sermon today. Understanding power and authority. Understanding power and authority. We take our text from Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He said, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. But ye shall receive power. What I want us to pay attention here is where the source of this power that the Bible says we shall receive is coming from. The source of this power. We are talking about understanding power and authority. I'm not going to, you know, dwell much about the other powers, but I will talk briefly about that. So we see, say we shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So the source of this power we are talking about or that we're going to receive is coming from the Holy Spirit, from the Holy Ghost. Then Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Now Jesus is talking, he said, Behold, now, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents, and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy if you say you do not have enemy you are just over exaggerating things of life if the bible mention a word go on if you don't understand it look at dictionary and understand what is an enemy when the bible talks about serpent and scorpion we will see that and the power of the enemy which means there are enemy Number one enemy all of us knows about is just Satan, but the manipulations and the way Satan does things. Like our brother is saying, and that is true. 
You know, people say, oh, Satan, I match you. Satan, you're stupid. Satan, you're foolish. That is just you talking. Sometimes Satan will even tell you, you, I don't even know you. That is talking. <laughs> Paul, I know. But you, you're just talking because you know how to talk. People are saying the same thing. That is why you have to understand the power and authority. You're just talking. Your talk does not move Satan. If the thing that is in you, there's nothing in you. It doesn't move him. If you lack talk from here till tomorrow, you're just wasting your time. That's why you have to understand power and authority. And that's why you see that today, all what you see is victims. You don't see the things that are happening, but you see, oh, this person is sick. But before this person becomes sick, something has happened somewhere. It's just the victims. Oh, this one is this. Oh, this one is it. Oh, that happened in that family. Oh, this happened in that. Something has happened somewhere before the manifestation. Praise the Lord. And that is why when we say that life is spiritual and we are spirit being, we don't understand it. You don't walk in physical alone when you are a spirit. There are things of the spirit. There are things of the spirit. Praise the Lord. So we see here that Jesus said, I give unto you. We're well, still going to come to that. Like I said, what the Sunday school was teaching and other things. It's just like what, you know, part of the sermon today. I give unto you. Remember, it's something that is given unto you. Behold, I give unto you power to do some certain things. Tread upon serpent and scorpion. Let us move quickly because of time. You know, I'm going to define power and authority. Just in a simpler way. And thank God that even in our Irocom, uh, that the Jew was talking about power and resurrection. That was even before I had this sermon. I just, you know, refreshed it. And he was talking about power. He said, when he said his resurrection power, his, you always, you already know Jesus is his. And he begin to talk about power and resurrection, which is to reconnect. Something is like this. You know, before someone is okay, and now the person becomes sick, sickness has taken over, and resurrection means to reconnect the person back to health. Praise the Lord. And the only thing that can do that is power. Praise the Lord. So Jesus is his. And then you have power. And what is power? Let me define it. And then I will define it as he also defined it. In that power is defined as a person's ability. Person's ability or capacity to do something. Power has to do with one's ability. So to have power means to have the ability to do something. You can hear people say, I will do everything within my power. Or they can also tell you that this one is not within my own power. I will do everything to help you. Within my power. And it can, you can come to the person that will tell you, oh, I can't help you because this one is not within my power. You see, power. And if you relate it, like our brother was saying, to physical things, we thought about, oh, Samson carried a gate and was climbing a hill. There's a physical power there and there's another power there. But you have to look at now. Let's, let's go practical and look at the physical thing. If I take out this one chair now and I call the children or each other, I say, can you lift this chair up? Every one of us, by the grace of God, will be lifting this chair up. We add it to two. People will lift we add it to three. People will be dropping from child to, you know. We add it to four. What are we trying to? We are now physically showing our ability. We're coming to the spiritual. We add it to six, seven, eight. You see, it will be, the people will continue to be reducing. Which means the ability, the strength is dropping. And when you don't have that power to carry it, no matter whatever you do, you can't carry it. You will struggle, you want to break yourself, sometimes even your, your waist. And that is why somebody will tell you, you look at some child, you say, oh, don't carry that because you're going to destroy yourself. Why? What are you telling you? You don't have that power. And Jesus, remember our text. So, that did you also define power? He said that power is 
that which enables you to do difficult things easily. Power is that which enables you to do difficult things easily. And that we have demonstrated. We are talking about physical power here. Praise the Lord. And then, like I said, where we read, that when the Bible says that when the Holy Ghost come upon you, you will receive power. That means, and, the, and also the Bible is telling us that I have given you power to tread on serpent, scorpion, and all the powers. That shows that in the spiritual realm, there are still other powers. There are still other powers. You know, today we can talk about a lot of things about power, you know, and things like that. And it is very, very rare that we children of God sometimes, we go to sleep. We don't understand what is happening. You know, I happen to listen sometimes to some testimonies or some messages, you know, and some people will be talking about how there have been witches or how there have been flying, you know, you know, in all this kind of astronautical whatever and things like that. And they can come onto a rooftop of a house and to cause havoc and they will leave. And they were saying that they can also come into, no matter how you lock your door, they can come into your sitting room or your bedroom and do things. The next day, things begin to happen. Because these are spiritual things. So we tell you they can swallow it on their stomach while they're flying and come to your house and bury it. These are real. These are, if you study spiritual realm, sometimes you begin to wonder that even your car key can be contaminated. You put your key to unlock your door of the car. Nothing is happening. You'll be saying, oh, but this is the key I just used now. And within a second, something is... So, brethren, do not be carried away by this issue of distractions. Life is spiritual. Life is real. Praise the Lord. And that is why I beg of us and said, please, no matter whatsoever, try not to leave the presence of God. The world is very dangerous and wicked. There are powers. You won't understand why are you in this situation... But I'm going to come to the next step of that. You won't understand why have I been struggling. Like I said, ask God, <coughs> excuse me, ask God to give you the understanding of the time and the season you're in. How are you fighting this battle? Is it the battle you need to fight or not? Or how do you go about fighting the battle? That's why some of us waste time in things that ought not to be. And the enemy will portray ourselves among ourselves. Praise the Lord. Let us see Ephesians. Like I said, remember what we talked about. I'm going to do an introduction of this summer. We'll continue next time. That the power we emphasize on, the power we are looking forward for all of us to say we have, if, is the power that comes from the Holy Spirit. The power that Jesus said he has given to us. And remember he said, all power belongs to God. Which means there are other power. But all power belongs to God. Let us look at Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, 21. It said, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power, according to to the power that walking in us. He will do all things abundantly. According to the measure of power that is working in. Like our brother was saying that. According to the measure of power that working in you. But remember brethren here. He said he will do exceedingly. Who is going to do that? The Lord Jesus. God is going to do that. According to the power. Which power? Which power? And he's going to do that unto him be the glory in church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. World without end. According to the power. 
Let us look at Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 12. He said, finally my brethren, we are still talking about power here. So there, are, there is power, there is power. There is power whether you like it or You know, ignorance does not excuse you from whatever you think that the enemy, oh, because I don't know, therefore enemy, please pardon me. That is, <laughs> that is just, I mean, wrong story. And sometimes people say that the problem you're going through is because of the ignorant that you have towards that area. Problem is an ignorant. And that is what we're praying about understanding and seeing because there are issues you'll be going through. You just know that you don't need to do anything at that time. Maybe praise God or maybe do something else. So when you something is really that is taking toll on you that you're saying, God, I don't, in short, no God, you go back to the world or you go on the street, it's because you're ignorant. Praise the Lord. He said, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You can't do it. He said, in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. The Bible is still repeating to us the issue of enemy and the devil. Brethren, do not take things for granted. When God is telling you there is this, pay attention to that. When the Bible says there are wives of the devil, and you think there is no. When the Bible says you are enemies, and you think there is no enemy because I'm a child of God, you are wasting. You're just making a mistake of life. I'm a child of God, therefore there is no enemy. I don't have any enemy. Who said so? The Bible says because there are enemies, that is why you have the power of God. And he said here, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Look at the wrestling. You know what it means to wrestle? To rest? In every wrestling, somebody must win. Somebody must put the other on the ground. If you look at some of these wrestling, in the, even in the physical wrestling, things like, what are they trying to do? To throw the other person on the ground. To stand on that person. That's the wrestling. So when you're wrestling, you're wrestling to stand or to fall or to be on the ground. And it is only by this power that the Bible says, it said that it is this power that will make you to stand against and to be strong in that wrestling so that you don't praise the Lord. So start wrestling is wrestling. So the Bible is using these things for us to make more meaning to understand what the Bible means. Therefore, you see, spiritual wrestling is very deadly. Look at your mind now. You're wrestling. You're wrestling. Do you know that your, the pain we are going through is not because of that pain. It's because of the content of our thoughts. If that thoughts, now we thought, if you overcome that thought, the pain ceases. But the enemy will not let it be because it will cloud you with that problem, that thought. Every second you think about it, you're having pain, you're weeping, and everything is happening around you. You overcome the thought, you overcome the pain. That is when understanding comes in. And that is the power of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our time is going far. Let us just talk a little bit about authority as well while we go further. What is authority? You see here, we have to understand power and authority is not the same thing. And that's where we get it. Power and authority is not the same thing. Jesus will tell you, I give you authority. I give you. Power and authority is not the same thing. Authority is defined as the right to control and give command. That is why somebody will tell you, when somebody tells you it's not within my power, what is he telling you? I don't have authority. I may have the power, but I don't have that authority to change it. Praise the Lord. I can't control it. I can't command it. I can't do anything. My power is limited. Praise the Lord. Because I don't have authority. So we see that authority, to have authority 
has nothing to do with your ability or your capability. Power is to do with ability. Authority doesn't have to do with your ability or capability. It doesn't have anything to do with your ability. For example, okay, I said to have authority means that the right, the power has been bestowed upon you whether you have the ability or not is not relevant. Whether you have the ability, now we are talking about power to live, power to do that, God said to give up. The, the, the authority, it has nothing to do with your ability. It has nothing to do with power, whatever. Once authority has been given to you, for example, brethren, I can decide now by the grace of God, because of the authority given to me, I said today's service will end by one o'clock. And people will be asking why. It's not because I can beat everybody here. It's not because I'm the tallest, the handsome, the greatest. But they were out of authority, I will speak. And that will stand. And many people have power more than me. But what am I exercising at this time? Authority. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Give God a big clap offering. So it's not about height when you deal with authority. It's like that in government places and things like that. It's not about height. It's not about education. It's not about intelligence. They can even pick somebody who is illiterate and put authority on that person. And that's why sometimes you begin to ask, why did this person come up to? Why is he commanding, controlling everyone? He doesn't know anything. He's working under the authority given up to him. But you have a power more than him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us look at Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. I might not be reading. Behold, I give unto you. Okay, let's, let's leave this. Go to Mark chapter 16 verse 15 and 18. Mark 16, 15 and 18. I said unto them, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall, shall be damned. He that believeth. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out. In my name. You see? Is, what, what, are they, what is Jesus trying to tell them here? In my name there is authority. Not because you have or whoever. But in my, that authority in my name, that when you mention it, it is going to cast out demons. Praise the Lord. He said, and this sign shall follow them, but in my name shall they cast out. He could have just told them, the sign will follow you, you will cast out demons. But he referred to them that it is in my name, the authority that I have in my name, you will cast out demons. You will cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpent and if they drink anything because of the authority he has. And let us look at Acts chapter 3 verse 6. He said, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. Silver and gold have I none. Money, power. But such as I have, I give in the, what is it? In the name, the authority I have in that name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You know, I'm going to say something. When, I, when the Bible say, in the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Remember, these knees that are bowing are not bowing it because they want to bow or they like to bow. But they have no choice because authority is speaking. They will not want to bow ordinarily. So when he say in the mention of the name of Jesus, every knees, there are knees that we say we will not bow, but because the name is mentioned, they have no choice. Whether they like it or they don't like it, they will bow under the authority of that name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you see, devil knows we have authority over him. And he will do everything. We're not talking about power here alone authority over devil. But he will do everything to blind us and make himself powerful because he knows that if we understand the authority we have, 
he is in trouble. He will present himself so powerful. That is why you see people forming a, 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 a pity party. Because they look at themselves, they say, oh devil, oh that witch, oh that this. The devil will do everything to make you to see him so powerful. The Bible says, all power has been given to, belongs to God. We're not saying there is no power. But when it belongs to God, who can stand? Okay. So the devil walk every now and then, every minute, is to make us to see him so powerful. In order that we go on pitying ourselves. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have control over what demons are doing. Authority gives us the right to command them to stop what they are doing. And they will stop because they know and recognize spiritual authority even better than us. They understand spiritual authority more than us. We are not talking about physical. In spiritual realm, they don't play with authority. Every one of them, even in the hierarchy of Satan, that is, that is why when Jesus cast out them, they were saying, you cast out this demon too. Jesus said, a house divided. He cannot use demon to cast out demon. But you see, in the hierarchy of demons, that is why when you talk about territorial demon, the demon in Homlia will never come to Oslo to overtake the one in Oslo. The territory of this demon, the assignment is he belongs in Oslo to cause havoc in Oslo. And when you talk about prince, the same thing, principalities, a prince that is here in Oslo, we never go to drumming and begin to cause problem. That is why I call. You look at, look at the kingdom, earthly kingdom. So when you hear about principalities, it means there is a prince of the, the, uh, uh, the demonic prince or prince from the satanic uh, that are controlling Oslo. And you see the pattern in Oslo. And before any demon will come in, they have to take I mean, they have to take permission. They don't work anyhow. That is why they are well organized. They can follow a victim. They can spy a victim. And they will try to get that. We can take them one year patiently. And you think all is well. And you're not praying. And when they strike, you begin to say, why me? Why did it happen? Why didn't it happen? Time is failing me. You know, like I said, there, there, there are three lessons I wanted us to take here. But I'm not going to put that today. Three important lessons from Exodus. But I just want to mention it. I will mention it. You know, next time I'm going to continue this because I want to deal on authority. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our power, like I said, an authority is not in our own ability. But in the power and authority that has been given unto us by Jesus. Why is the authority given unto us? We have seen it, the serpent, the scorpions. You know, serpent bites and scorpions stings. I don't have time to explain that, but I'm going to explain that. The biting and the stinging. Why Jesus mentioned that two group? The serpents and scorpions. And he went for that to talk about enemies. You know, serpents are very dangerous. They don't appear like normal. You look at the Garden of Eden. They don't appear like a monster. He appears he appear friendly. He appears very nice. You know, but we don't have time to talk. What I want to also emphasize here is three things that I said I'm going to teach next time in Exodus. You know, this Exodus of a thing was when Moses, when the children of Israelites were living in Egypt, you know, they had been in Egypt complaining and saying all sorts of things, and they were about to leave Egypt. You know, the Bible said that God had in the heart of Pharaoh. And they were leaving Egypt. As they were moving, they looked back. They saw that Egyptians were coming with chariots and horses, pursuing them. And the Bible said they were solely afraid, all of them. They said, they even begin to blame Moses. They said they would die. There's nothing more about it. And then Moses, what happened? Moses, the Bible said Moses cried unto God. Do you know the question God asked? That's where I want to draw the three lessons today. God asked, why cry unto me? What do you have? The three lessons I want to just mention. Number one is be sure of prayer. Number two is that it's not every time you need to cry to God. 
It's not every time you need to cry to God. God sees it as a coward, cowardice behavior. Because what Moses did was crying in fear. God sees it as lack of faith. You know, when you, and what do I want to emphasize on this is that if you look at the things that are happening in the Bible, that is why the power and authority is given to you. You see that in the day of Jesus Christ on the boat, he didn't pray. In the day of five loaves or two fishes, he prayed and said, Father, I thank you. But when he come to the boat, the water is already in the boat. They are already sinking. What did he say? He commanded. He took authority over it. Praise the Lord. So God is a, it's the same thing when the COVID was coming. Everybody was quoting Psalm 91. Oh, the, the 10,000 will do this and whatever thousand. They shall not come near me. Oh, the Lord, and then the COVID come near you and enter you. Are you going to see me praying Psalm 91? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Like our dick is, are you still going to say they will not come? You're going to stand now. That's what God said. I command you, this body you have entered, I will not die. I take authority from whichever agent you're coming from. I stand against you because the mark of the blood is upon me. You begin to speak out of authority. You begin, so there is a time to pray or manner of prayer. There's a time to take authority and command. Saints, if you understand me. Praise the Lord. There's a time. You cannot, you cannot be watching. They came to the Red Sea. And God said, why cry unto me? You're no more in Egypt. You must move forward. Don't go back. If you go back in the world, what do you have in your hand? What authority do you have? What power do you have in your hand? You should strike, not cry. You should touch, not cry. Therefore, brethren, there's a time to cry. When things are happening in your family, you have been praying, and all of a sudden, things you don't like begin to happen in your life. You take a stand. No matter how the enemy are trying to push you, you say, I refuse, I reject. Not because I have the power, but in the name of Jesus. See, my God have I known. But in that name, I believe in that authority. I command you in that authority. I stand in that authority. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a time. And then the last thing I want to say, I said next time I'm going to expand, share these things I'm talking. I'm just giving us a, a so the last thing, lesson we have to learn, brethren. This is the one we might not like. The Bible says, Behold, I give you. There's a time called season of life. What give you does not, like our brother was trying to say, God owns the power. What is given to you belongs to God, that power and authority. There's a time called season. I will dwell here and next preaching. The season of life means you can command, you can take authority, and nothing is happening because you're in a season. That is when you will ask the question, why do good, bad things happen to good people? And no answer will come. Because you're in a season. That is why you look into your life and say, why me? Because you're in a season of preparation to greatness. Jesus Christ came at a point and said, God, if I wish, I will ask this cup of stuff. You know, season of seasons are so painful. It's a crushing time. It's a time you will be lonely. It's a time you will cry and no tears will come out again. And God is watching you. It's a time you will be refined. Oh God, I don't have time to preach much on this because of the time. But I said, I'm going to take time to deal with this for us to understand. Are you in a season? But please, finally, don't mock anybody in any season. I'm not talking about, remember, I'm not talking about people who are suffering because of sin or because of, a season is not because you committed sin. A season is not because you don't have the power and authority in you. That's sin in you. But because it's given to you, God said you are in a season. 
Elijah ran because Jezebel said, if I get you, this is Elijah, we are saying, Elijah called fire. And when Jezebel talked, Elijah ran to a Jupiter tree. And the Bible said, he called God because he was depressed and discouraged. God, take my life. I am done. That is Elijah for you because of his season. David went to the cave of Adam. A season of life. You can't do anything about it. But the only thing you can do is don't give up. Shall we rise up on our feet? So we rise up on our feet. I'll continue the sermon by the grace of God. I'll continue the sermon. You prayed, you fasted. You have the power. Don't doubt about whether you have the power. Don't doubt about whether you're a Christian. You're just in a season. You're the season of greatness. If Jesus didn't die, there would be no salvation, no redemption. He cried. He wept. He started weeping from the tomb of Lazarus because he remembered that he's going to be buried as well. As a man of sorrow. The Bible called him. You're going into sorrow, discouraged of life. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't give up. I'll finish that song. The Bible said, when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, they were like them that dream. It will happen suddenly. The season will be over. Yeah. Just thank God for what you have had. Encourage yourself in the Lord. It will happen suddenly. They were like them that dream. You don't know when. Pastor don't know when. But God knows. You have been in that season for years. You have prayed, fasted, so seeds. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. You feel lonely, you weep and weep. And we don't want the Bible call it weeping mentor. The Bible says Jesus Christ despised the shame. There's a time you'll be put to shame. There's a time you'll be despised. There's a time you'll be rejected. You're in a season. this season that's how you say you're tired I've been doing all things oh in this family in this church in this my job why did the manager don't like me season comes in different ways I will explain season come it might not be <laughs> some are in a season of lost Thank you, Father. To you, Lord, be all the glory. Amen. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Father, thank you for strengthening us today. Thank you that you made one promise that we're going to stand on. That you will never leave nor forsake us. May we not leave you. In the name of Jesus. Through this week, encourage us, Lord. Strengthen us. Uphold us. And may your grace, all that we need, be available for us. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you because we answered our prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For your name's sake, oh God. The Bible says there's a casting down, there's a lifting up. We bow before you. We will not serve any foreign God. We will not go to get help from Egypt. Amen. We decide and decree and declare that our help only comes from you. And Father, we require that help now according to your will. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed and giving thanks. And we may give God a big clap of faith. Let us share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit Abide with us now, forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, all goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace and rejoice in Jesus' name. May the grace of favor be upon us this month in the name of Jesus. It is well with us. God bless us.